All right, so we're gonna be unboxing the 55 inch LG OLED C1. So we're just gonna dive into it without wasting any time and get started. So the first thing I noticed is that packing is the exact same as the LG C10. Nothing too different in that regard. It literally just looks exactly the same. We can just get rid of this. Don't really need that. And then we just take the plastic off and move on with the unboxing. So looking at all the pieces we get, we've got this little stand piece here. We've got all your stuff that basically comes in a plastic bag. I mean, it's nothing premium like we used to see with the nice boxes that LG used to have. And again, you just have the little corner pieces here. I'll take everything out. And then you have the other long piece of the stand right here. It comes in styrofoam. Nothing crazy there. Okay, looking at both remotes, one of the huge downgrades you're going to notice is this remote is far less premium than what we saw on the older remote. If you notice, it's more square shaped on the bottom. This allows you to be able to stand it upright. Obviously, it's not doing it here, but if you go on like a flat surface or whatever, you, you can stand it up. Where this is just round, it, it's just a remote now, so there's no standing up on its own. You've lost that feature, so that's something that, again, might seem small, but it's really annoying in the bigger scheme of things when you're, you're, you're losing things now. So again, where you would have had the ability to put it on a nightstand and just have it sit comfortably, you know, to free up some space somewhere, now you have to be a little bit more conservative as to where you place this thing. You might have to find a dedicated space for it. That's just one of the immediate things. Also, the general feel in the, in the hand is a lot cheaper. Some people have said that it feels more ergonomic because it has this little cutout here. This cutout does not feel more ergonomic. It just feels like I'm just holding a remote. There's nothing more ergonomic than what I have here. In fact, this feels more ergonomic because if you look, my finger, my index finger naturally lies right here on the placement. So for that part of it, this feels a lot better. The older remote is leaps and bounds better. And I don't know, I don't know what this is supposed to be. This just feels like a cheaper, cheaper remote. I don't know. But that's something that I did want to compare because I know some people have been wondering about that. So we're going to move on with the unboxing process now. Now, something I wanted to point out, which I find absolutely hilarious, is LG is not on some so-called road to zero. But they only have styrofoam, which, again, not too destructive, right? Styrofoam. And then, like, this is all the plastic that you get. This right here. This is your plastic. This is your plastic. I mean, it's so minimal. And it's funny because Sony, for three grand on their A90J is talking about this road to zero and like environmentally friendly, but LG just so happens to be more environmentally friendly, I guess, accidentally than a company claiming to have some road to zero this year. So something to throw out this year, because I know that you guys are probably going to be looking at the C10, or the C1 and the A90J as like really your main things for like premium TVs. I know a lot of people are talking about the G1, but that TV doesn't have any stand included. And for that reason alone, I'm out. I'm not going to buy a TV that doesn't have the ability to do something very basic, like be tabletop, because that's the only way I do these TV reviews. But that being said, we're going to continue on with the unboxing process and show some more stuff off. All right, so as we look at the back of this TV, it's very, very plain, plain Jane. There's not really a whole lot here. You've got your USB ports. You've got your 4K 120 port right there on the back, right? I don't know if it's focusing correctly, but you guys see it. And then over here on this side, we have more of the same, your 4K 120 ports. And again, all four of them are 4K 120. So, you know, that's good there. Um, don't know the bandwidth on them. Don't really care at this point. It doesn't really seem like many people are going to have HDMI 2.1 devices anyway, especially with scalpers and bots doing what they've been doing lately. So. We'll see with that, but it is what it is. But at least you guys can kind of see the back of the TV. And it looks pretty plain Jane. If I'm being very honest, there's not really a whole lot to it. It's just like a very, see I'm having focusing issues here. It's a it's a very plain Jane like black back TV. It's really plain Jane, just plain. There's not really a lot to it. So moving on. All right, stand assembly is really easy. It's just like the C10. Really difficult to do one-handed, but essentially you take these grooves right here and you're just gonna line them up with the grooves in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're just gonna literally line it up the best we can. And it goes in there. I'm trying to do it one-handed. You guys see, it, it, it's, it goes into place. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then once we do that, we put the screws in. Now to find the screws is really easy. All you do is just lift up the stand, 
Once you lift up the stand, there they are right there. Screw hole one, two, and three, and that is where you're gonna drop your screws. Now, because of the design of the stand, you can literally just do one of these, okay? You can lean it back and let it rest on this piece right here like so, and literally just let it fall, and that's literally it, and then you just drop your screws. It's very simple. Now, I've taken the liberty of already dropping my screws, but one of the things I do wanna mention is that there can be a varying level of difficulty, despite this being a fairly simple design, it depends on your holes. So all these holes here, like one, two, and three, it really depends on how they cut them. I did not have the best of luck. Again, they cut it too thin. And because they cut the metal cutout for the screw to go in really thin, I had to end up shaving my screw. Don't know if you can see that a good degree. Not terribly, but it didn't go in all the way. And the same holds true for this. So, you know, I have two sides that weren't cut appropriately, but the middle one was cut just fine. This happened on like the first C10 that I had and it was a pain in the ass and I didn't know what the hell was going on. I've seen this before, so now I know about it. This is something LG needs to work on because this can absolutely ruin the experience of somebody that just paid $1,900 after taxes for an OLED experience that basically in a nutshell, you're kind of just sitting here trying to figure out how to put the stand together when really they just cut it too thin. So maybe they need to invest in a screwless design because this is definitely going to screw a lot of people over if it hasn't already. All right, once you've done that, you just basically drop the stand on by aligning it with this little piece here on the back. You just really line it up with the grooves here. There's two little grooves. You just put it in and drop it down. It's very simple. Then you drop your four screws, which I've already done. A special thing to note though, excuse me, why my camera decides it wants to or does not want to focus. Okay, a special thing to note here is you're going to need a special kind of screwdriver. You need a long one like this because these little tiny screw holes as you get closer to the base of the stand here is going to be a lot harder to screw in. So just keep that in mind as you're going uh, with a screwdriver choice, the thicker ones will not work. You'll be there all day trying to figure that out. Now, another negative that I do have to mention, there is still a built-in power cord. So if anything ever happens to this cable, you are SOL and basically your whole OLED unit is trashed. So that's also not really great for wall mounters as well. If you can't reach the plugs, you're basically screwed. You don't have a choice but to be stuck with this limit. And you're gonna have to come up with some extension cord solutions. It's not the longest wire. I don't know why they keep doing this, but it's just something that I guess most people aren't addressing, so they keep doing. But it'd be nice to see a removable uh, AC adapter of some sort, or rather power adapter of some sort. Now we turn the C10, or rather the C1, on for the first time. I swear it feels just like a C10, <laughs> which is funny because this they share a signal, so my C10 literally just turned on right now. But I mean, it, it's so incredibly difficult to see a difference visually, between these two TVs. I mean, like the C10 literally over here looks exactly, literally exactly the same as this over here. And it just kind of feels like, what the hell LG? Like you could have at the very least changed the stand to make us remotely think we had a different TV. So I hope the panel's different. This feels very similar. Okay, so hit the okay button, which by the way is smaller this year. So it's harder to press the center. I'm gonna try to turn off just my C10. Let's see if I'm successful. No, did I turn off that one too? Fuck, I'm not trying to do that. That's one of the problems you're gonna have also if you have like one of each, whatever, whatever. It's just gonna, it's just gonna be what it is. That's one of the problems you're gonna face if you have two LGs in the same room. You can't just like have one remote work on one frequency and the other on another one. So be mindful of that. All right, we're just gonna hit the okay button. TV. Boy, this is super robotic, huh? Can't I just like, do I have to do, I don't know. Time zone, let's go New York. All right, now we're gonna hit next. All right, now it's doing its user analysis thing. There are no devices paired, which that's true. I don't have this service. Next, enter a zip code. You don't need to know that. Can't I just move on without one? Apparently not. That's lame, so I have to enter a zip code now. 
All right, guys, so now you can see there is something on the screen now actually playing. And uh, I'm going to go over some of the picture options that you guys have for the LG C1. So we're going to open up the menu and we're going to go into the picture settings whenever I get there. I'm, I'm not kidding, by the way, as to how difficult it is to move your fingers around. It's so tiny, the, the circle to navigate. It's really, unless you've got like little people hands, there's just no way that you're able to pull this off comfortably. Very uncomfortable. But all right, so I'm in Cinema User. Uh, you have, I'll show you the picture profiles that you have, the, the picture modes. You have Vivid, Standard, APS, which is the auto power save. You have Cinema User, you have Sports, Filmmaker, Expert, Bright, and Expert Day. Now, immediately, if you're like me, you know you're missing the HDR effect mode, which is one of LG's greatest modes. And it is the one mode that I honestly use on my C10 all the time that helped it get close to my older Sony OLED processing, the uh, A8G. So the fact that that's missing is a downgrade. You are going to probably have a more difficult time getting that level of picture quality. At least that's what I'll say there. I'll officially test everything out, but I'm not happy that that's gone. I did mention it earlier on, but again, yes, it's confirmed that is gone. They've ripped that out. See, the thing with these new TVs, they don't tell you what they take out. They just say it's new, but you're not actually gaining anything. There's nothing new for what they took away. We have to document this stuff because we're still paying these prices. So, you know, especially with the C10 on the market right now being cheaper and having more features so far, that's something that you, again, do have to weigh up for yourself. All right, now we're gonna look at what we have under, now they have like kind of like tabs like Sony does, so you click on it as brightness. Under brightness, you have like the uh, OLED pixel brightness, which energy saving, you know, you don't need that on. You have contrast, you have the screen brightness, which is just the OLED light, and in essence, I would imagine like the maybe the black level. I really, it's really confusing the way they go about explaining the settings this year. I, that's also important to note. If you're somebody that's used to LG OLED, this is very different. So screen brightness is, yeah, that's looking a lot more like just the be the black levels, the digital black levels. So yeah, that's what that is. That's where you'll find, the, you know, the regular brightness. So it works like normal brightness. So you have contrast. Uh, auto dynamic contrast is interesting. I was playing around with this and I found that it actually makes the picture look a lot better in some areas and you get a lot more throw in the contrast and it works better than what it did on the C10. So that is something to note because usually these are like hyper destructive, very destructive features that don't really add a whole lot where this actually did add a good amount to the picture quality and it actually adds brightness to the picture, which I didn't expect. And that extra brightness isn't destructive or anything. It just enhances the overall image quality. So something you might want to leave on or mess around with, but definitely a benefit and a positive direction forward. Now we're going to go to the next settings here. We have the peak brightness set to high, but you can set it however you want. As you guys are seeing, uh, you know, it's just going to adjust the luminosity of different bright points. Um, we've got the gamma. What's nice this year is, you know, they just kind of lay everything out in a very simplistic way. It's really easy to understand. BT-1886, 2.4, 2.2, it's all very easy. There's no like high, medium, or low. So that's good to note. Uh, I don't know if that follows through in the other modes. I haven't really run the gamut, but I mean, the way that they label it like limited and full and everything's just really easy to read is the word I'd use. It's very easy to read. That's gonna be something that a lot of people are gonna appreciate. Uh, motion eye care, same as always, nothing too fancy there. Now we're gonna go into the color tab. We have color depth, which you just change how much saturation you want. We have tint, we have color gamut. I put it to native because I don't like auto. I know what that defaults to. That defaults to the, uh, the Rec 709, not my thing. So I go to the native where things start looking a little better. Now we go into fine tune and then you have something called color upgrade this year and you can go low, medium, high, or you can go user and then you can do what you want there. But I just set it to high and honestly, I think it looks good. I don't really know particularly what exactly the whole color upgrade is. They say that it adjusts the saturation automatically to make things look brighter and more vivid. But honestly, it just, 
I mean, it, it does that, it does. I mean, but I don't know, I, I, I'd have to mess around with it. Obviously you can do a straight up color calibration when you go to user, but I'm not doing that right now. Uh, we have the color temperatures. This year you have, you know, it's the same as before, but what I like is that for movie mode, you know, you're in uh, warm 50 already. You don't have to really deal with them starting out at like cold, the, the cool point. They usually do like C20. That was like the biggest thing that like all LG OLEDs used to do. And so it's nice to see them doing like warmer things out the gate. Um, and then of course you can choose your method of calibration. You can do 10, you can do 22 point, you can do two point, uh, high point, low point, same as last year, nothing incredible there. And then under clarity, you have your sharpness, you have super resolution, which you still do have high, medium, and low, so nothing changed there. You're same with the noise re uh, reduction, you have auto, high, medium, and low for both of them. So again, nothing to worry about there. You do have smooth gradation, high, medium, low, nothing changed there, you're not losing anything there. Um, now one thing I do need to point out, uh, you also have a cinema screen, uh, that's, you know, their cinematic aspect ratio kind of thing, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, just the frame ratio, so I imagine that is the aspect ratio for cinema. Um, you know, for 3-2 pull down and all that nonsense. But you have something that I really want to talk about right now that no other YouTuber is going to talk about, and that's the motion processing. True Motion this year has seen a significant refinement. They have something called cinematic movement. Now, typically, I go to smooth movement because it's the only way to get, like, really nice movement. Cinematic movement is incredible this year because it actually, like, no, you don't have the most soap opera effecty look, but at the same point in time, it just moves across the screen so incredibly, like, natural. It, it just, it looks fluid, it looks clean, and even though it doesn't have, like, crazy soap opera effect, it still looks really good. I really like the cinematic movement. I do not really care too much for you know, the old way that they used to do it. I think that it needed some work and this is definitely the refinement that they needed. Smooth movement is way better than even when you go to user and you start ramping up D Judder. This is just like crazy fluid smooth and it's probably, I'll go out and say this, the smoothest TV I've ever seen. It's very cool and I think that this is one of the areas where they really, really, really win big this year. Now, uh, you have filmmaker mode, auto start, we don't want that. You have the blue light reduction feature. Under the aspect ratio, you still have all of the same options. You have four-way zoom. I don't think that was a feature on the C10. I'm not entirely sure, I don't remember seeing that. Um, but you have options. I, I, I just turned off my C10 or something like that. Uh, and then you have your I think I already went into the advanced settings there for that. So I mean really, it, it's you have just scan. You can turn it off or on, but what I am noticing is that, again, it, it's, it's very easy to read all of this stuff. Now, one of the things that you do lose, you do not have the HDMI signaling override menu. I have tried a thousand times and there's just no HDMI signaling override menu. Typically how you do it, you go to your picture mode, you'd hover over the selected mode, you type in the code 1113111, and that should take you there, but it doesn't because they don't have that feature. So I've seen some rumors online saying that they had an HDMI signaling override menu. That is false, that is not true. You do not have that on this particular display. So that's one of the downsides that you will be facing, you know, but all in all, I think, you know, so far so good. We're gonna have to obviously see how it does on a more, I guess, stress testy kind of scene. I mean, I'm not, I haven't done much outside of just whip it out of the box. Now, if I was digital trends, this is the point where I would just compare both the C10 and the C1 and call it a day, but you know, the LG C1 is gonna get calibrated. It's gonna get adjusted. I'm gonna do what I do to it. So uh, stay tuned for those videos. And uh, again, just let me know what you guys wanna see. I know there's a lot of requests you guys have already left on my last video, so I'll be getting to that. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.